Hi guys, and happy Sunday. I really hope that this camera angle is okay. I'm using a different camera today. And the hedge trimmers have just started up. I'm just gonna have to try and film around uh, the hedge trimmers going on and off sporadically. Um, but today I wanted to film a quick little flip through of my Kiki K wedding planner before I've done anything in it. I'm absolutely dying to get into this now so I wanted to quickly film it. So this planner is still on the Kiki K website and I will leave that um, in the description for you below. However I would advise that you have a look on eBay beforehand because there were a couple of these on eBay when I looked back in February. Yes I did buy this in February even though I had no idea we'd be getting engaged this year. I managed to get it for £15 when it's still on the Kiki K website for £51. Um, so it was an absolute bargain. I couldn't say no to it, which is why I ended up buying it before I was even engaged. Um, and it had everything included in it. The only thing I would say is that the cover is a little bit skewiff, but I'm literally just using this for my own memories anyway. I am planning on also doing a bullet journal for my wedding planning, which is probably what I'll take to appointments and things. So this is basically going to be like a pretty planner that I keep for my memories of planning the wedding. So as you can see, it's white, it is leather, it's got gold foil polka dots and it's got the big day in cursive writing on it. And then inside, as you can see, it's still got the ring protectors on, which I will take off now. Uh, but inside it's white leather here, but it's gray on the back. And I think that's really pretty. So I'm just gonna take these ring protectors off now because they do make it a bit difficult to turn the pages and things. Um, and obviously it's got gold hardware as well. Okay, so we've got their standard little notepad in the top pocket here, a little information about how you should open the rings, and three card slots, along with your zip pocket, and a little pocket in the back there that's quite difficult to get to. Um, and then we've got a first page which has your personal information on it. And then what I love is there's a wedding countdown checklist. So we've got 12 months, six to nine months, three to five months, one to two months, uh, two weeks to go, one or two days to go, and after the wedding. And then there's a big other checklist as well. And I love that. Right guys, I am really sorry, but um, I'm battling with neighbours having their hedges cut down and also now my boyfriend has just come in and he is putting up wardrobes in the room upstairs. So I'm really sorry if there's background noise, but this is the only time that I have to film this video, so I need to just plough on. But anyway, I really, really love this idea. I think it's fantastic. Some of it won't apply to us because we are having such a casual wedding, um, or that's our intention anyway, but... I love it, it's very helpful. Um, then we've got important contacts, so I've got the venue, photographer, marriage efficient, florist, and then a few extra ones. So those are like your main people that you might need to contact, I suppose, and have their details handy. Um, we've got some really lovely stickers, I like the counting down the days one, I feel like I'm already counting down the days and we don't even have a date set yet. Um, and then there's some tab stickers so that you can change your tabs to suit you if you need to. And we have our first section, which is the calendar. So basically it's just monthly pages so that you can mark down important dates or like have some sort of countdown system to your wedding if you want. You could use that countdown in the front to set out these pages and say, okay, by this date I need to have done this and you know, that sort of thing. So they are just plain monthly pages. The next one is budget and guests. So there's a to-do section with some to do's a budget checklist this again is so helpful so it's got everything broken down so if you it's even got engagement party here like if you want to have an engagement party which we're not going to do um i think we're going to have a dinner out at some point with our parents and siblings but i haven't arranged that yet uh but it's got everything broken down so we've got ceremony reception transport attire and it's got estimated cost, actual cost, deposit paid and balance due. Uh, we've got jewellery, suits, wedding rings, hair and makeup, photography and video, music, stationery, everything you can think of, invitations, RSVP cards, flowers and decor, gifts and favours, like it's crazy. Then there's honeymoon and a whole miscellaneous section so you can fill that with anything that you might need. Um, then we've got the guest list. So we've got guest name, RSVP, table number, dietary requirements, present received and thank you sent. 
this is amazing. I love this planner so much. Um, we really need to sort out our guest list ASAP because we need to know what sort of venues we've got to look at. Um, we have very large families and we're already running into issues um, in terms of guest lists. So this is perfect. And there's a couple of pages of that. Obviously, some people have very large weddings so there's quite a few pages of guest list and you could separate that out into daytime and evening if you needed to then they've got notes pages so again that's really useful there's a venue section again there's to do's in the front um, and then it goes into ceremony venue research so you could write down all the places that you've seen that you want to go and look at or that you want to contact and there is location phone email price available dates notes and contact information there so you can literally have everything all in one space and there's two three four pages of that um that's quite useful for us actually because we're planning to look at quite a few places our budget is quite tight then we've got ceremony order so it's a ceremony part and person assigned so i suppose that's if you want uh, you could write down your bridesmaids, your groomsmen, flower girls, ushers, people who are going to do readings, that sort of thing. And then we've got reception venue research. So obviously most people, they'd get married in a church, for example, and then um, have their reception somewhere else. But we're not going to do that. We are intending to actually get married and have our reception all in the same place. Um, so we might not use both sections of this planner, but again, there's several pages of that and then you've got a reception order section so you can order out exactly what you want to happen so first dance cutting the cake speeches all sorts and you can put a time in there there's a reception seating chart so you could plan out who you want on each table and again you've got several pages of that it goes all the way to table 24 um but again that's super useful you can sort of play around with things what i think i would probably do is put people on post-it notes and move them around um and then you've got similar to the venue research you've got caterer research and again this is something that will be really useful for us we want to hire a venue where we can bring in our own caterers we're quite fussy with food we also don't want to spend thousands and thousands on food when we don't have to so researching caterers is going to be a big part of our planning i think and again you've got a couple of pages of that you've then got a page or two for wedding cake research that's something we probably won't really use because we're not even sure if we want a wedding cake. Uh, beverages research, so you can look for different people who could bring a bar in if your venue doesn't have one. Then we've got final menu page and special diet alternatives. I don't know, again, if I'll use this. We're not having a sit-down meal. Um, we want something really informal, but I could try and make that work for me. Then we've got transport, so uh, transport to ceremony venue, from ceremony venue to photo location, from photo location to reception, and from reception to after party. So um, this, again, probably not something I'll use. I might need transport from um, where I get ready in the morning to our venue if our venue doesn't provide somewhere for the bride to get ready. But other than that, probably not going to need it because like I said we're hoping to have our wedding all in one place but again it is useful to have in the planner just in case and most people will um use this section um and then you've got transport research there a couple of pages followed by notes the next section is all about the dress and I am here for it so again it starts off with some to-do pages this is a chunky section um we've got to do pages right at the beginning and then there is an inspiration page for the bride so you can basically make a vision board of everything you want in your dress and if you see a picture in a magazine or whatever you can pop in a picture or do a little sketch or something or it says color palettes here i just oh i love it so much and i'm definitely going to use this so you can make yourself a vision board of your dress there's another spare page there and there 
And then there's dress research. So it gives you a place to write your measurements and then it gives you a place to write down your favorite gowns. So if you go to several different bridal stores and try on lots of gowns, but you can't make a decision, you can note them all down in here and you can go back and look at them again and sort of reassess, especially if you take pictures and you can pop them on your vision board. Um, and you've just got a note of all your favorite dresses. Um, I'll probably want to try on lots of them just to make the most of the experience, but I do have a feeling that I'll find my dress quite quickly. I'm quite indecisive in many areas of my life, but with stuff like this, I think it will be quite a quick process. Then we've got accessories research. So there's shoes, a headpiece or veil, jewellery, wedding rings, other, and well, there's several sections for other. Um, so you can make a note of like shoes you've tried on, things you might like, um, veils you've tried on, etc. Bridesmaid dresses research. This is something I think I will use actually because I've already been looking at bridesmaid dresses. I, I know who I'm asking to be my bridesmaids. Um, they don't know yet, but I know. <laughs> and obviously they haven't all said yes yet, so things might change. But um, they are all quite similar in shape actually so i've already been looking at bridesmaid dresses with them in mind and it would actually be really useful to note down ones that i've seen that i like so i think i will actually use this and um once they've all said yes i want to add us all into a group chat and they can send suggestions as well so i'll note down the ones that i like um, and again there's a few pages for that then there's the groom inspiration so again you can make a vision board with your partner because obviously they've got to wear it so it has to be something that they want to wear and that they like so they can pick out things that they like and you can make a little vision board together and there are two pages for that and then same as with the, the dress you've got groom attire research so you can put their measurements favorite tuxedos and suits and there's two pages of that so that you can note down which suits you like. Again, Will is quite decisive with things like this. I think we'll just go somewhere, look at something and he'll like it and buy it basically. Um, and then there's the same thing for the groomsmen. So generally the groom and the groomsmen wear the same sort of thing. Um, so there's a couple of pages for that to research too. And then there's other attire. So it's basically for other people in the wedding party I am not a bridezilla at all so as long as people are comfortable and look fairly smart I really don't care what people wear um so again this probably isn't what I'll use but for fun me and my mum might use it to like write down things that she might like to wear and there's two pages of that one then we've got hair and makeup inspiration and I'm so not into makeup so I will probably just have the most simple natural makeup on the day um, but hair is oh I am so excited to plan out my hair I actually already know pretty much what I want um, so I can't wait to make this little vision board here and I could do it for the brides uh, the bridesmaids as well um, because there are two pages again and we've got hair and makeup appointments, so there's the bride, um, hair, makeup, nails, and other. So I guess if you want to get like a spray tan or your eyelashes done or something like that, again, I'm very low maintenance, so I'm not sure I will do any of that. But hair and nails and makeup, I will definitely be researching and, and definitely be making appointments. And then there's a whole section for the bridesmaids as well. And then there's a whole section for other people. So in case you are, I don't know, in case your groom wants to go and have some treatments done, I mean, why not? Or again, like my mum and my mother-in-law might want to go, could make a no note of that in here. And then it ends with notes. The next tab is for photos. And again, we've got to-do pictures, uh, to-do pages in the front, followed by a vision board my favorite um, and again I've already been looking sneakily at photographers but it doesn't hurt to have a little vision board of the sort of style that you like and some photos that you might want to have and again there are two pages for that photographer research is definitely something that I will use so again it's got the company um, contact information phone email price and notes and there's two pages of that 
And then there's photography order list, so you can make a note of everything that you want to order so that you don't get confused when you come to contact your photographer and say what you want or you go to an external company and, and order what you want. Um, so there's double page spread of that. Then there's video inspiration, so not really sure visually what you would put here because obviously it would it would just look like photographs but you could note down links and names of people that you were interested in in talking to um and then you've got videographer research as well then we've got ceremony music research and we actually already know somebody who's going to sort out our music for us but it's still useful to have um and there's two pages of that reception music research same thing two pages of that and then there is a, a ceremony music order and it's already got a few suggestions in there for you so walking down the aisle ending the ceremony and signing the register you can pick which songs you want um, and then for the reception we've got walking into the reception first dance bouquet toss cutting the cake and ending the night um i'm not going to be tossing my bouquet by the way <laughs> no no I'm keeping that bouquet um, and then we've got a favourites playlist so you've got song and artist and you can note down everything that you might want at the wedding on the playlist for the reception um, and I think on our invitations I might include a section for people to suggest a song as well um, so that we can add that to the playlist also. Then we've got a do not playlist, so songs that you absolutely do not want to have played at your wedding. So maybe somebody suggests something really sad or there's some songs that your partner really hates or whatever, you can add them to this list. Um, and it's two pages and it's just songs that will absolutely not be on the playlist. And I can definitely understand why people would do that. And um, there are some songs that remind me of like really hard times in my life, for example. Um, and you, you wouldn't want them on at your wedding, would you? So. I think I probably will use this section actually. And again, it ends with notes. This last one says pop the champagne and it's all about the details. So again, we start with to-do pages and then there is a styling inspiration vision board and this is probably one of the ones I'm most excited about. Um, I have already been using Pinterest. I'll put up a little scrolly thing now um i've been using pinterest already i am chloe's thoughts over on pinterest if you would like to follow me everything about the wedding is being pinned on that board on pinterest so i can't wait to print pictures off and stick them in here i think i'm going to need some more pages to be honest um but there's two pages for that then there's table setting final design. So it says, once you get clear on your final table setting design, paste in images and or jot down notes of what it's going to look like on these pages. So obviously I need to know what venue we'll be in um, and what size and shape the tables are, but I do already have quite a clear view of what I want my tables to look like. There's a to buy list. So we've got item, from where, quantity needed, notes and price. So all of your little decor and styling items would go here. And there's two, three, four pages. Then we've got decorations, final design. So again, when you're sort of clear on your final uh, design of what you want for your decor, you could pop it on that vision board. And there's a to buy section there as well for that, which is four pages long. Then there's a DIY projects list and this is basically going to be the biggest section that I probably use um, <laughs> because I want to DIY as much of the wedding as possible. So we've got project, materials, quantity needed, who will help and notes and who will help. That will be my lovely mum. She cannot wait. So there is a couple of pages for that. Then there's a flowers inspiration page. So it says create a mood board of your favourite flowers, colours and floral arrangements to inspire you when briefing the florist. Again, can't wait to do this. And again, I already have a good idea of what I want them to look like. So there's two pages for that. Flowers research. So you can note down the contact details of florists that you're interested in speaking to. And there's two pages for that. And then they've given you a flowers checklist. So there, it's broken down into personal flowers, ceremony and reception. So bride's bouquet, maid of honour's bouquet, bridesmaid's bouquet, groom's boutonniere, which is like the little buttonhole. Uh, same for groomsmen and ushers. Corsages for mum or grandmother. Tossing bouquet, because a lot of people have a separate bouquet that they toss, but I'm not going to do that. Um, 
aisle flowers, entrance way, and then entrance guest book table, table centerpieces, and cake table, uh, followed by some notes. Stationery inspiration, so save the date cards, invites, menus, all that sort of thing will go on this vision board. And there's two pages for that. Stationery research, stationery checklist, and it gives you some ideas, which I do think is helpful because I would definitely forget things. So uh, engagement party invitations and thank you cards, save the dates, invitations, RSVP cards, wedding program, place cards, seating plan, menus, favour tags, guest book and thank you cards. Um, again, a lot of it's going to be simple. A lot of it I'm going to do myself. But it's useful to have and there's a few pages for that wedding invite wording so there's a whole section for that and it talks about host line request line brides and grooms names wedding date ceremony location and time reception location and time attire rsvp date rsvp details and additional information followed by some notes and then there are favors so we've got a favors vision board and a to buy section so everything you need to get to make your favours or to put them together or where you're going to order them from and thank you gift ideas so it is customary for people to buy thank you gifts for people in their bridal party and in the groomsman's party and then a gift registry wish list which we're not going to do because we don't need any wedding gifts we have lived together for three years we've been together for six years we have everything we need but we do think we might ask for um donations towards a honeymoon if people would like to do that and that goes on for a couple of pages but again we're not going to use it followed by some notes and then there's a honeymoon section so there's to do's honeymoon research so place and why we want to travel ideal length of stay and notes that goes on for two double pages and then there's a budget, so you've got flights, travel insurance, visa or passport, accommodation, transport and vaccinations or medical supplies needed. And you've got a whole section to fill that out for each of your destinations. And there's a couple of pages of that. We already know that we would like to go to Hawaii, but it's useful to have anyway. And then there's an itinerary. So it's broken down into several sections so I suppose it's if you want to travel around on your honeymoon or you could plan a few potential itineraries and um, so you've got departing arriving length of stay transport accommodation and notes and that goes on for a couple of pages several in fact many in fact <laughs> and then you've got flights two pages of flights three pages of flights in oh my goodness four pages of flights wow these people are ambitious um, and then accommodation and again you've got several pages for that research followed by some notes and then the last thing in the planner is a little notepad that says bride's notes on it and wow I'm so excited um, and that is the planner so I really wanted to show this to you before it has my scribbles all over it but I will hopefully show you little updates as we go through even if it's just in my weekly vlogs um, but yeah I really hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions let me know and I will see you in the next one bye guys